Okay. Okay. Uh, we are in Bracho. We um, we're finishing up the whole section of do the dead have a um, do the dead can the dead understand what's going on? Remember the whole conversation started because uh, uh, Yonatan and uh, and who was it? Maybe yeah, who was it? Really? Uh, they were. Uh, he was walking with his friend over the gravesite, and he said, "Pick up your stitches, remember?" Mm-hmm. And the guy says, "Why, watch Reb Chia?" So uh, Reb Chia, I think it was Reb Chia. The sons of Reb Chia. Yeah. No, no, I have to go back. You have to, oh, books you have to go back uh-huh. a thousand pages. Uh, so yeah, Reb Chia and Reb Yonatan. So Reb Chia was uh, walking with Reb Yonatan. They went. They were going to the uh, graveyard. And so Rav Yonatan had his sisters out. Rav Chia says, tuck your sisters in, or pick them up, uh, because otherwise it's like mocking the poor and mocking the dead, because they, they don't fulfill the mitzvot, uh, they're exempted, and we and so by us doing it, it's as if we were mocking them. Okay, And so uh, Rav, Yon, Rav Yonatan said, what are you talking about? We learn that the dead have no, they don't know what's going on in this world. So that's when Rabbi, uh, uh, that's when Rabbi Khanin, uh, said to him that uh, you read it wrong, you misunderstood it, and so on and so forth. So then we get into this whole conversation trying to prove it. And finally, the Gemara says, after all of these things, the stories of Shmuel, the stories of the, uh, even though, I should say, uh, each story, maybe the, the one about Shmuel, the one about uh, the the person who lost, whose uh, landlady hid the uh, the money, and she said, give me these, these uh, tell my mother to send the, uh, the cosmetics and the comb, okay? Each, in all those cases, even though we had an excuse for why the next world, as it were, would know what's going on, not necessarily because they had some inside information, but rather either somebody new was coming or Duma, the, the one in charge, the angel in charge, said a great man is coming in the case of Shmuel, so it's not necessarily that they knew what was going on in this world, but nonetheless, they, uh, they, they had, uh, that's one opinion. But the other opinion says, so we uh, was trying to prove that they do know what's going on. So in the end, we see Av Rav Yonatan Hadarbe, even Rav Yonatan himself retracted his earlier view on this matter. Why? And now Rav Yonatan suddenly agrees that the dead do know what's going on in this world. I guess from that point on, he would not let his sisters hang when he's walking through the, uh, over, uh, or run over the graves when he's walking through the graveyard. And how does he know this? Because there's the Amar uh, how do we know this? I mean, how does Gemara know it? The Amar Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmani Amar Rebbe Yonatan, because we have a tradition. It says Shmuel, the son of Nachmani, he said in the name of Yonatan, how do we know, from where do we know that the dead talk with each other? Because it's written in the Torah, it's written in Devarim, in Deuteronomy, Fayom Hashem Elav Hashem said to Moshe, Zod Ot Zod Haaret, Shinishbati La Avraham, Yitzchak Yaakov Lemor. This is the land. That I swore to Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, saying, and so now, what is he doing? Moshe is never sees the land of Israel, as we know. He cannot go into Israel because of the sin of uh, Meriva, where he hit the rock. Instead of talking to the rock as God commanded, God said, you don't believe in me, you don't trust me, and therefore your punishment for uh, hitting the rock, instead of talking to the rock, as I instructed you, was you will not enter the land of Israel. Okay, even though Moshe repeatedly asked for pardon, as, uh, and uh, God says to him, no, but God concedes, as it were, to let Moshe see the land. So he brings them to the mountain, and he says, see the land, that this is the land that I'm going to give 
uh, that I promised to your forefathers. Okay, that's what that's what that verse is going on. So the Gemara says, "My lemur." What's the meaning of the word "saying" or "quote"? Ramban, the Ramban in uh, and the Chumash and Parsh Shemot, I think it was, or well, one of the is in, in the Book of Shemot certainly. He exp- he explores what the word "lemur" means. It's the infinitive to say. Okay, that's that's why people say saying, but he wants uh, the Ramban wants to uh, say it means quote. This is exactly what you should say. Okay, that's how he interprets it. Other people have their things, but everybody is uh, when you see it translated, it always will say saying. Okay, and so now the Gemara asks it. That's why it's a strange question. Miley more. What does it mean saying? So. God said to Moshe, Leich and Molehem, Ba'aram, Yitzchak, Uliakov. Go and say to them, who they, who's them? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shavua, Shen, Batilech, and the oath that I swore to you, Kevarkim, Tia, Livnechem. I have now fulfilled it, I have already fulfilled it to your, to your children who have begun to take the land, okay? So what he's saying is to Moshe, as you go off, that's the whole point of Lamor, because it, it, but it didn't have to say it, that's the point. It could have said, this is the land, because he's showing it. Remember, Hashem is showing Moshe the land. So all he has to do is say, this is the land, I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, period. Why do you need the extra word Lamor? That's the Gemara's question. Why the extra word? So the word Lamor, which normally means quote unquote, says Hashem tells Moshe, you have to go to Aram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov and say, remember that swore, that Shavua that Hashem made to you at different times? I have fulfilled this through your children. They have come, to, they have begun to conquer the land. So now that's a clear proof that the, uh, that Rev, first of all, that Rev Yonatan holds that the uh, that the dead do have something, do care what's going on with this world, okay, and that's why Moshe has to go and tell Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. So then the Gemara says, "The Yitzchak Adachas Lo Yadai." Now, if you assume, but if you're going to assume that the dead do not know anything about the affairs affairs of this world, and are as Rav Yochanan originally thought, completely insensible to all worldly matters. So then, why should they? T- why should Moshe tell them anything? Moshe wouldn't have told them. So there. So if that's the point, for that reason, we say that Rav Yonatan must have retracted his original view, and really now he holds that they they are aware of what's going on. So the Gemara says on this, Ella Madiada. He says, wait, wait, wait a second, Neymar says, we have a problem. And now, if Rav Yonatan really holds that they know of world affairs, Lama Leila Memelahu. So, if that's the case where they know what's going on, they can see that the Jews are starting to inherit the land. Why does Moshe have to go up there and tell them that they're inheriting the land? You understand the question? If I know what's going on, so why do you have to tell me? I don't need to be told. I know what's going on. I have eyes too, as it were. I can see. Okay. So the Gemara says, "Ach azuke le tivata tivuta the motion." And was the Gemara says, "You're absolutely correct. Really, they did not need to be told. But why were they told? So Hashem sent motion to them in order that they could show appreciation to Moshe." All that he had done yeah. for their descendants. Is that how the Gemara answers that? But so the Gemara is coming out with this decision that really the dead, at this point anyway, really the dead do know what's going on. And what, the fact that we're going to say something to them, in, the case, in this case, Moshe, is just for the forefathers to give Moshe appreciation. And that's the end of it. Okay, that's fine. So that's that's where that the conversation somewhat comes to an end. Like I said, we're going to go a little more with it, but that is uh, at least answering up for Rabbi Yonatan how he could suddenly change his mind or via the proofs change change his mind. Okay. So I'll just go a little into here. Um, where was it?
Also, the riff says like this. He says, really, and he's going on the, uh, the expression, the statement of really, they do know what's going on. He says, Raj explains it, as we see from this, the yada mi chashuv, that we see, uh, is known, I'm sorry, who is uh, more important, whether they be alive and they, and, uh, and they need, but he needs to explain something here. Okay. This is our Perush, the Perusho. There has to be an explanation for his explanation. And Tosfot explains, Alma Yada, so the Tosfot says, so we see. Oh, that's, that's what I wanted. That's something else. Sorry. Um, that's talking about a different case. Oh, so it wasn't there? I know I saw something I wanted to go over. Oh, we didn't get there yet. That's the problem. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, so then we have to go a little further. Okay. It's the next teaching. Okay, so I'm Rav Yitzchak. Let's go to the next teaching. Do you have this? Yeah. Okay. So call him a Sapir Acharami. If anyone speaks disparagingly about a dead person, he even a Sapir Acharia Evan. It is as if he was speaking badly against the stone. So is that good or bad? Means nothing. Means nothing. So what does that mean? The, the dead is unaffected by that. So Rashi says, uh, okay, it just says that if you're speaking uh, in disgrace, kanut means, or disparagement, yeah. fine. So then, there are those who say, what does it mean that the dead does not know? Because, again, that will contradict what we just said. Right? We just came and went through a whole bunch of Gemaras to prove that they do know what's going on on one, on some level. So what happens is the Gemara explains there's no contradiction. The Ika da Amri, there are those who say that uh, they don't know what is said about them, but the other explanation is they do know what's going on, but they don't care. What do I care? You said something about me. It doesn't really matter. So, any is it so? Is it true what you're saying? I am a Rav Papa. Rav Papa said, "Chad ishta'el milta batre de marshmol." Somebody said something bad uh, about uh, Marshmuel, the master Shmuel, after he died. Benafol kanya uh, mitalala, and a large, heavy pole fell from the roof. Uvaza. <laughs> La Arnaka de Mocha and split open his head and killed him. Okay. So it seems that he was punished on behalf of what he said about Shmuel. So obviously Shmuel was affected. Shmuel got a little angry. So it's, it's interesting that the uh, the way the Gemara is painting this at this moment is that if you say something bad about the, the dead person, that dead person does care and can cause bad things to happen. Okay? So that's what it seems to be saying. Huh. And then it says, the Gemara answers, Shani, Tzorb, Mem, Rabbanon. That now, a rabbi, a rabbinical scholar, such as Shmuel, is different. The Kudshabrichu, Tava Bikare. Because Hashem demands retribution for the insult to the honor. So it's not that the dead person has any power whatsoever is that when I, when you insult such a person as Shmuel, that's when Hashem gets upset ah. and punishes you for that. Ah. Okay? So now, ah. now this, this is what we were. Okay, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting concept. So, oh, okay. I, I just want to run through this. So, you know, bear with me for two seconds. Okay, so it says, the Chedushe Ga'onim. So the Rav Yitzchak says, Kol mesaper achar meit ki ilu mesaper achar evan. Like we said, Rav Yitzchak said, anybody who uh, who talks against uh, the dead person is as if he is speaking against a stone. So ikid da amri, there are those who explain the lo yada, that really they don't know what's going on. But ikid da amri, like we said in the Gemara, there are those who say, the yada will ishpat That's the whole Gemara, fine. Any, is it so? And then it continues. You have the case of Rav Papa, who said that anybody who speaks against uh, that a person spoke against Marshmul and his head was broken. So he says, 
So we have a kasha. We have a difficulty from the Gemara Erechim, where it says the Amar Ravi Elazar ben Parta ba Borei. Come and see. Come and gedola kochol shel lashon hara. How great the power of lashon hara was from the spies. As Maraglan, the spies, they uh, spoke Lashon Hara. Who they speak Lashon Hara against? The stone, the wood, and the stones of Eretz Israel. Ad the Alma, Mishum, the Amrav Chinir, Ki Chazaku, Memenu, Viachol. So it says, uh, okay, sorry. Um, Amrav. So then it says the Pasuk says, the Amuta Ahana Shem, Mose 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 Dibata Aret, the Gomer, that uh, they died because they spoke Lashon Har about the land. Al Iske Dibat Haaret made to on the matters of uh, uh, on the matters of speaking against the land, that's why they died. Hare uh come on the uh the Nanshu Shadibra al Aitsam Vavan. So we see that they were punished on that they spoke against the wood and the stones. But Khan Am Ravizkok. And here Ravizkok said, Ki ilu misapter akara evan. And here Ravizkok said it's like speaking against the stone. So if the what his point is you have a problem. You're saying after a stone means that it, it means nothing to the person. Or he doesn't care. But we see that the spies who only spoke against the wood and the stones of the land of Israel punished for Lashon Hara. Yeah. So how can you say this? Yeah. Uh, so it's is difficult. The said Rav Yitzchak holds the the Nasu al Davar Gadol should. I'm sorry, the Nenshu al Davar Gadol should Davru Meraglim. It's difficult that he's holding that uh, on such a great thing that they that the that the Miraglam were punished on that they spoke in that hour to be Akhal Afilu, okay? Ta'ai the Mashkan of Shas Al Dibana Aret Nenju. So because it seems from Shas that's why the Gemara, that's why they were punished. Venera the Farish. So it seems to that we have to explain. Bear Od Khat the Mashkana Sarkamod the Shani Bain Sorba Mirabanan Ama Art. That's why the Gemara says there is a difference between the rabbis or the rabbinical scholars or rabbinical students to the regular Amar arts. The Ka'amar Rebbe Yitzchak called him a sapir akharah mate. When Rebbe Yitzchak said that anybody speaks against the mate, that is a dead person, I read Amar. He was speaking about the, the regular guy, not the rabbinical scholar, and that's why he says like speaking after a stone. The pair is there. Samba Markom Shahaya Lom Farish. Okay. Am I low come behead you? So if that's the case, why didn't he say explicitly Akar ha made Ama Arts ke Why didn't he just say it like uh, against an Ama Arts? The uh, ignoramus Amnam Kushikada Itachi uh Bier Khaberta. So we see that one answer one answer is gonna go for the other one. The Hine Harisham Bikhayem Kuroy made him because we know that Rishaim and during their lifetime are called dead. The Tzadikim Gedolim B'mitatan M'vichayim and the righteous to find what it went uh, the righteous the, the, the great righteous in their death uh, they're great in their death then in their lives. The Esha Dezehu Kavana Rabbi Yitzchak, maybe that's and it is possible that the intent of Rabbi Yitzchak was to say that anybody who speaks against the dead, that's referring to the uh, wicked in his in their lifetime, because he's considered dead, is Ke'ilu Mesaper, it's as if they're talking against a stone. In other words, if a person is wicked, and I'm speaking about them during their life or during their death, it's like I'm speaking against a stone, which I don't get punished for. Yeah. The Mikasha, uh, yeah, Haven Shatan, so then it's understood in a simple manner. The Chain, Hikshah, the Shaol, so then you can have a question say, Hi, Rav Papa, you're sorry, but you have that case of 
But Papa would have said that people were speaking against uh, 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 Shmuel, and they were killed. The Matari Shan it's so been run. So that's what we say that the rabbinical students were different. Koloma and Achinami is true. Kevana Rav Yitzchak Amru Kolmus that the intent of Rav Yitzchak was to say that all who who speak against badly against the dead, which is again the Yama Arts, but there that's like speaking against the stone. But when it comes to the rabbinical students. Even Reb Yitzchak would agree uh, that Hashem will take care of that person. Mm. Okay, I, it goes much longer, but I don't want to do that. But I'm pointing out that Reb Yitzchak, according to the Chidushe Go'onim, Reb Yitzchak's statement is a limited statement. When he says that, uh, we, and we have to understand it that way, that uh, those who are, when a person speaks against the dead, that they're like stones, it's only about the Russia, the wicked person that they speak against. And that's when no repercussions are going to happen. On the other hand, if you speak against a, a Talmud Chacham, then he, even after his death, because he's considered like a living person, there will be repercussions. Not from him, not from the dead person you speak against, male, male, or, uh, male or female, or rather Hashem will take umbrage, if you will, at that sort of behavior, and we'll uh, correct you by him. In one way or another, in this case, in the Gemara's case, yeah. killing you. Yeah. So I mean, it's not good to speak Lashon Hara in general, certainly not uh, against a tzaddik. If you're going to speak against a Rasha, well, you, you can get away with it, but I would say you should train yourself up to speak Lashon Hara. Okay, thank you.